UFC 281 was one of the greatest events I've ever seen. Just uh, perfect, damn near. It was 14 fights. We got 11 finishes. Five fights on the main card, obviously, and we got five finishes. Just uh, such a dramatic night. It was so exciting from beginning to end, and I'm going to talk about it from end to beginning, pretty much. Alex Pereira wins the championship, taking out Israel Adesanya in round five. I love nothing more than a last round finish, even in a third round fight, of course, as most, most fights are, but especially in a championship fight, and this was awesome. This was a comeback. He was down three to one. Things were definitely trending out of Sonya's way. I, I didn't look at the live odds. I'm sure they announced them during the fight. I never really pay attention, but... Israel Adesanya had won rounds one, three, and four. I thought Pereira stole round two, just barely won it. And here he needed a finish, as Glover Teixeira, uh, Glover Teixeira told him in the corner. You need a finish. Move forward. I forget what the translation was or whatever, but he was saying all that shit. And uh, Pereira went forward, and he went... Uh, Came out like a bat out of hell in round five. Immediately poured the pressure on. And just one too many times out of Sonya let himself get cornered. And, you know, one time he got cornered and he never, never got out. Uh, it was just uh, one shot after another. Kept clipping him and clipping him. And he was hurt. And uh, that was it, you know. I know he protested the stoppage. But as they pointed out in the replay, his head was down. He was out of it. It was uh, definitely a fair stoppage. Even if he wasn't concussed or... You know, if he didn't think he was out of it. But uh, can't blame the ref, you know, at that point. So, great win for Pereira. He wins the championship, which is just, I can't overstate how cool that is. That this, you know, two consecutive kickboxers. Damn near pure kickboxers. I know, by the, by the time Adesanya got to the UFC, you know, especially got to the title. He'd been in the UFC and been tested, and he'd fought along the way. But Pereira, he is... Much closer to a pure kickboxer at this point. And e even, either way, both guys are essentially pure kickboxers. And I never would have figured that they would, ha you know, have their day in the sun. I thought that was settled in 93. I know the sport constantly evolves, but I didn't think it would evolve to the point where kickboxers are thriving. But they are. And look, I don't want to make it like uh, uh, Alex Pereira just beat Marvin Vittori or whatever. Uh, you know, I know he fought a kickboxer in Israel Adesanya, so you could argue that it's a stylistically favorable matchup, but still, I feel like you have to celebrate the fact that a kickboxer just won the strap from another kickboxer. It's fucking bizarre. Anyway, I think uh, Pereira performed very well, considering he was uh, starting to get worked over, I thought, in the in-between areas, in the clinch, and certainly on the ground. And he survived. He was, uh, you know, kept fighting back, building his base, you know, wall walking, doing what he could against the cage. And uh, he fought his way out of every bad position. And then in round five, again, he needed the, the knockout. And he did what probably nobody else could do. And what nobody would ever be favored to do. But he somehow seems to do whenever he needs to. And that's get the knockout. Just, uh... Amazing, such an amazing performance, and absolutely, we will see a rematch. That's my prediction, anyway. But, uh, yeah, just a really cool performance. We got to see everything from these guys. The grappling was uh, really fun. Watching Pereira steal round two with a takedown, which I thought, in you know, at that moment, the takedown seals the round for him, and uh, it did, I thought. You know, just a really interesting fight along the way, but... You know, in retrospect, maybe Israel Adesanya pursuing the grappling and the clinch fighting was to his detriment because he uh, maybe that was valuable energy he could have used in round five to circle out or whatever. I don't know. You know, that's up to him to decide. But still, uh, Israel was winning. It was another fight, just like their other fights, where Israel was winning, no doubt about it. Or, you know, I guess there was some doubt, certainly in the first fight. But, uh, it didn't matter in the end, because Pereira sealed the deal, just like the second fight, with a brutal finish. And that's uh, something that you can't deny. It happens twice like that. I'm not saying it'll happen a third time, but I'm saying it's no fluke. This guy has done it multiple times. It's a trade of his. He's got t 
you know, tenacity, and he's got the power that no one else has, that he carries deep into any fight, kickboxing, MMA, whatever. If you can throw punches, you're in trouble, like, uh, every second of the fight. So, a really, really cool fight. Uh, very cool finish and comeback, and we have a new champion, kickboxer. Uh, so, all right, uh, Wei Li Zhang takes out uh, Carla Esparza. That was a kind of one-sided fight. Carla did make round one close with some top control, but uh, generally I thought she was out-scrambled, out-wrestled, and out-muscled. And uh, that was the story of this fight. Wei Li was just a little too much for her. That rear naked choke was a little, uh, I don't know. It was either a lot of arm strength or a little bit of fuck this but nevertheless uh Wei Li Zhang did come through with a big submission which submission round two was plus 2200 uh you know definitely uh one of the more juicy props there and Wei Li came through with a big victory there she uh is now a two-time champion with Rose and Carla she's a legend that's Hall of Fame status right there and she's looking like a really tough task for anybody in the division, including Rose. So, great win for Wei Li Zhang. First person to finish Carla since Tatiana Suarez. And um, definitely, uh, you know, a great performance. She ran through her like not too many other fighters have. And then uh, Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier took out Michael Chandler in the third round. That was really surprising to me, the way it ended, where it was via submission. I know they're both skilled with submissions, and I know, generally speaking, more people would be inclined to say Poirier has better jujitsu, certainly now, myself included. But before the fight, I would have assumed Chandler had better submission skills overall. Better jujitsu or better chance of getting a submission, I should say, over Poirier. And th there was a time where I thought he would in the fight. But uh, his top control, you know, a lot of his stuff is a little too rushed. And at the end, that's what cost him, is rushing that takedown. He wanted to slam him and go into the back control right away. And uh, he got a little too aggressive, left a little too much space between him and Dustin from getting so aggressive on slams and whatever. And Dustin just uh, rotated into him and found top control and Chandler never got up. So uh, great performance from Dustin Poirier. I did think he was discouraged with round two. He was clearly controlled. And I love seeing Chandler go for the takedown. That was a really interesting wrinkle to that fight because... You know, this fight had knockout written all over it, and those are my predictions. Chandler by knockout round one, which always almost hits, if doesn't hit, and it did almost hit here, but it didn't. And then I thought Poirier would win via knockout in rounds two and three, and instead uh, turned into more of a grappling affair, and Poirier, again, uh, broke Chandler uh, just in another way, and he did it with a rear naked choke. So, him getting the first submission win over Chandler, it's a nice feather in his cap. You know, Chandler, uh, like I said, he's underrated on the ground. He only got to submit, Marcin held. And we've seen him, Charles Oliveira, uh, everyone else, he's damn good. He was the guy that, you know, as a younger fighter, in his first big, big fight, submitted Eddie Alvarez, the veteran, in round four of a war. So, I've always respected his grappling or his submission prowess anyway. So, a uh, great win for Poirier. And then afterwards, I don't know what the fuck happened. There was some uh, more fighting going on, but whatever. Uh, Chris Gutierrez knocked out Frankie Edgar. What do you want from me? I picked Frankie because I really I did think he was going to win. I thought those leg kicks would uh, open him up to takedowns, Chris Gutierrez. And instead, they didn't. They were just slamming into Frankie, hurting him, and then... Uh, you know, after, what, two or three minutes, he got hit with that big uh, big knee, and that was it. So, it sucks for Frankie Edgar to get knocked out like that. And, uh, of course, in front of his family, which they showed on the big screen and on the television screen. But, uh, whatever. You know, he put himself on the line, and he was fa he was supposed to lose. And I think more uh, everybody knew there was a chance that was going to happen. And, of course, he did. It's happened a little more lately, as opposed to never happening for the first 20 fights of his career or whatever. And, uh, 
here he is. He put himself out on the line one more time, and it didn't work out. But still, he's a legend, Hall of Famer, and uh, no shame ever. So, it sucks, but great win for Gutierrez now. He's got two flashy knockouts after a career of, you know, really tight decisions. Uh, you know, a UFC career of really tight decisions. And he's definitely uh, starting to separate himself. He's... Uh, starting to uh, gain some traction within the division here and I expect a big fight for him next no doubt about it so uh, and he's also 7-1-1 one and one, which is very pretty Dan Hooker took out uh, Claudio Pouillas that was a very interesting fight for a round and then after that wasn't so interesting but it was obvious Dan Hooker was the better fighter and he won eventually with a front kick but uh, Claudio Pouillas you know, it was obvious that this was a too big a step up in competition for him, and he needs to regroup. He needs better striking and wrestling, you know. Uh, he, you need more than Imanari rolls and uh, knee bar. But uh, still, he almost had it, so there is that. But uh, Dan Hooker gets a big win. That was awesome for Dan Hooker. He obviously needed a big win here, and uh, I'm glad he pulled through as a favorite, did what he was supposed to do. And then Moicano, Moicano took out Brad Riddell. That was uh, pretty one-sided and pretty quick. He beat him pretty much every which way and got the submission early on. Rear Naked Choke, another one, which I think makes it 10 for 10 now for his submission victories, Rear Naked Chokes. So uh, great win for Moicano. He got a little overhyped on the mic afterwards, but still made for a nice moment, you know, like... An endearing moment. Like, ah, oh, look at this fucking buffoon. But, um, or maybe it, it was off-putting. I don't know. Either way. Uh, great win for Moicano. You know, he's a guy who's always been a little underrated. Certainly is a striker. And again, he's got zero TKO still. But as you saw tonight over striker Brad Riddell, uh, Moicano is no, no slouch. Certainly from range. Uh... And Brad Riddell, I don't know now. He might be gone for all I know. But he's had some really tough losses. Moicano, Fiziev, and uh, Jalen Turner. So hopefully they keep him around. He's definitely worthy of another shot, I'd say, just based on the competition. But three losses is three losses. And then Ryan Spann knocked out Dominic Reyes. That really sucks for Dominic Reyes. That makes it four in a row now. And that's spread out over the course of three years or whatever. Two years, I should say. No, no, three years. So that's really shitty. He's had his face broken a couple of times, and here he is knocked unconscious from a jab. And, you know, it's fun to call it a jab, but, you know, there's a little more torque in some of these jabs. There's another guy who got knocked out with a jab. I don't know. But, um, yeah, yeah, there's a little more torque with some of these jabs, but still, it's not the most powerful punch, and it caught him flush, and that was it. So... I don't trust his chin. I think he should find another, you know, field, to be honest. Look, guys have surprised me. Andre Orlovsky and whatever, but uh, getting knocked out and you're not getting any smaller. You're going to be fighting these guys that, you know, are cutting weight that make 205 troubles ahead. So uh, that really sucks for Dominic Reyes if this is the end of his career, and it might be, probably is. But, uh... Great win for Ryan Spann. Ryan Spann, again, if you played uh, his prop round one plus 600, knockout or submission, you know, uh, Ryan Spann's a pretty pretty reliable round one fighter. Uh, live or die. Kill or be killed. And he got the kill here. He's definitely got the power. He's a little awkward on his feet, but no doubt he's got the power and he's got a guillotine from hell. So uh, if you have any sort of weakness... If his opponent has any sort of weakness at all, where he's been finishing one way or another, probably just bet on Ryan Span round one, you know, flat. So, a uh, great win for Span. Uh, Aaron Blanchfield, speaking of great victories, another first round TKO. Uh, was it a TKO? No, no, Kimura. It was a, this was a Kimura. She beat the shit out of uh, Molly McCann. Uh, I forget what even happened on the feet, but as soon as she wanted a takedown, she hit a takedown, cut right through the guard. I don't even remember them being in the guard. It was like immediate uh, crucifix. I just remember a crucifix for three minutes, 
And she beat the shit out of Molly, started working subs, and Molly was clearly just a fish out of water, on, you know, with Blanchfield on, on top of her. And eventually, a Kimura, just, uh, you can't run from a Kimura. So she forced a tap, kills Molly McCann's hype train. This was a really shitty fight promotionally for uh, Molly McCann, but great win for Blanchfield. You know, this definitely er erases that stain that she had from the J.J. Aldrich victory, which still was a second-round submission victory. But uh, you know what I mean. It was a tougher performance, and this was uh, a much more clean victory. And then, uh, who was this? Oh, Andre Petrosky takes out uh, Wellington Terman. Petrosky, again, he's a guy that I uh, still expect the next few times he loses for him to be finished late in the fight or late in the round, uh, you know, especially two or three. But he's proven to have good cardio, and he had an incredible round three here. A 10-8 round, he's got two round three finishes, which, you know, again, he made that point after he beat Michael Gilmore of saying, we wanted this. My coaches are happy that I went. they took me three rounds to get this victory because they want to see me go over eight minutes. He was concerned with his two losses being in, in uh, you know, around eight minutes. But uh, here he is again with a strong round three. Left no doubt in anyone's mind. I thought he could add a 10-8, even though I think no one gave him a 10-8. Maybe I was just too drunk. But Petrosky had a great performance, and I thought he did uh, his best work grappling with the grappler, Wellington Terman. Uh, and when they were standing, I always seem a little too worried about Petrosky's chin, but I think he's got a damn good chin. So, uh, maybe he's not as fallible as I, uh, once thought. I don't even know what that fucking word means. Hopefully it's right. But anyway, uh, Matt Frivola, I got that one wrong. He knocked out Otman Azaitar. I had Azaitar winning in round one via knockout, although the under, uh, still hit. So, I'm happy about it. But Frivola gets a round one knockout. We'd never seen Azaitar lose. And, uh, Frivola... Even though we've seen him throw down, we've never seen him get that knockout like that. He's got one early in his career against a total bum. But, uh, you know, no offense if the bum happens to be watching this. But uh, he doesn't have any knockouts as a pro over any serious competition. And here he is fighting the guy that's supposed to be the king of the round one knockout, according to this MMA al dente jerk-off. And uh, Frivola puts him on his ass in round one. And that was just awesome. Great, great victory for Matt Frivola in home, the hometown. Just like Mike Trezano. I uh, bet against both these guys and picked against both of them, despite them being the local guys, just to show I'm not biased. But I'm happy to see them come through at MSG. That was awesome. Frivola knocked out the knockout artist and shut everyone up. Aside from me, because I got to do this post-fight video thing. Karolina Kovalkiewicz takes out uh, Silvana gomez Juarez. This was interesting. I don't know what the hell happened with that scorecard. You know, I actually want to look into that. I kind of wish I looked into it before I made this video, but I wanted to get this video out there. That was bizarre, though. That's some, you know, New York State shit. They don't have their shit together, uh, the Athletic Commission. But Carolina, I did think, got the better of Silvana, go uh, Silvana here. I did think she overall got the better of her. You know, uh, and she was working her on the ground, especially early in round one, uh, which I don't even remember how they hit the ground. I feel like it wasn't a conventional takedown. I think she just took her back against the cage or something. But uh, nevertheless, she seized the moment and uh, had a dominant round there. And from there, even the striking, I thought uh, Carolina got the better of Silvana. I... Uh, I, I wish I could remember exactly how the fight broke down, round by round by round. But uh, I just know at the end I thought uh, this was Carolina's fight. Could even be 30-27, but I added 29-28. And uh, I was just perplexed by what was going on with the scorecards. But uh, anyway, I did bet on the under in that fight, and the under didn't hit. Both their durability showed. Carolina taking the shots, and uh, also Silvana surviving on the ground as well. So, uh, there's that. And then, uh, Mike Trezano. Mike Trezano gets a big knockout over Sung Woo Choi. That was a really surprising finish. You know, uh, Trezano 
like I said, coming into this event, he's got three, he had three victories in the UFC, and each one of them was him scratching and clawing to get a razor-thin decision. And here, he finally gets that finish that he was seeking. He had talked about it coming into the uh, Lucas Almeida fight. He wanted a finish, and... Uh, you know, that may have resulted in him getting caught. And, you know, he put himself on the line again here t uh, tonight against Sung Woo Choi. And, man, it was just awesome. Left hook county, like I said in that other video. They dropped each other with the left hooks, uh, which seems like it happens with every Trisano fight nowadays. But uh, Sung Woo Choi, I thought, would be the powerful uh, striker. I mean, he may have been, for all I know. But Trisano is uh, very technically sound. And he kept himself in there and then took him out. Just uh, blasted him towards the end of round one. After uh, each one of them, I think, scored another knockdown. It was just a wild war. A round one war, which we rarely see. I know we see plenty of uh, wild rounds. But when the fight ends within one round, I feel like it's uh, its own separate thing. And this is definitely one of the best uh, round one wars ever. So great win for Trezano at home. I underestimated him, no doubt about it. And uh, Montel Jackson took out the hometown guy, Julio Arce. That was uh, Montel uh, took over that fight, I want to say, uh, with wrestling in rounds two and three. He did seem to be the better wrestler. But on the feet, I thought Montel would have a distinct advantage just with his power combined with his range and length and, uh, and height. And Julio Arce was having none of it. Julio Arce was in his face. Again, he's as technically sound as uh, Trezano, or whoever the hell I was just talking about, uh, as the next guy. But uh, he, uh, well, he didn't have enough for Montel. Montel, when he wanted to, uh, you know, steal the round, he made it a battle of physicality and wrestling. And uh, he won rounds two and three, took over that fight, and Arce was uh, n never back in it after round one. But still... Uh, Arce is a very tough fighter to beat, so that's a great win for Montel Jackson. His record only gets prettier. I think now he's 6-2 and two in the UFC, and those two losses are to the only two guys that out-wrestled him. Ricky Simone and Brett Johns. Barely. Uh, and then the first fight of the night, another one I got wrong. You're welcome. Uh... Carlos Olberg knocking out uh, Nikolai Negomariano. I think I called him Nicholas a few times in the pre-fight video. But Negomariano, I bet on him and I picked him because I thought he was tougher. Than, I mean, I still think he's incredibly tough. But I did think he was more durable overall. Where he was going to be able to take anything Olberg threw at him and break him with his pressure. And I do think in another universe or whatever, uh, on another day, he could have fought that fight and won that fight. But... Olberg, uh, he's a very good fighter, you know, and he's learning how to fight to his strengths, cutting, you know, uh, dancing around, cutting great angles, and, uh, of course, landing great shots, and he danced around Nega Mariano, and Nega Mariano never made it a dirtier fight, he was just fighting on the outside, and you want to fight a pretty fight at range like that with Olberg, you got to make something happen because before long it's going to be too much and it was too much so uh turns out his chin wasn't that great he found out the hard way but uh great win for Olberg. Olberg definitely uh you know uh needed a great performance like that he was you know part of adesanya's team city kickboxing you know they all rally around each other and he pulled his weight for his team definitely a great victory to, to get the night started off and uh, that was the event. I thought overall, again, it was one of the best events I've ever seen from beginning to end. And I'm probably going to watch it again. Can't fucking wait. Just got to go to sleep. All right. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit, and check out my other videos.